My name is Fatih Pirol, and I am the chief economist of the International Energy Agency in Paris. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to pretty. I'm going to start pretty. Um, you know, you were at the Oil and Money Conference um, whenever it was in October, and you must have seen Sadat Al Husseini's um, presentation. I mean, I, really, I, the, my film starts is talking about reserves, and in that he was saying, you know, he thinks the reserves may be heavily exaggerated, maybe th up to 300 billion barrels. I've also, you know, I also talked to a lot of other people about this and went to Kuwait and had a look at their reserves. And many, you know, the, the evidence is coming out more and more that this reserve hike in the 80s might actually be real. What, what do you think about this? I think the reserves issue is a key issue to be solved in the oil industry. There are a lot of numbers uh, from different countries, from different sources, but what is lacking is the transparency. We at the International Energy Agency believe that uh, there are plenty of reserves uh, worldwide. There are enough reserves uh, to uh, run the world 40 more years, 35, 40 more years. But uh, there are two questions attached to that. The first one is the reserves numbers that we are working on. Are they right numbers or wrong numbers? Are they inflated or not? So we need transparency in terms of the reserves data, and I think this is a very important uh, issue to look into. The second one is perhaps for me more important. The fact that you have reserves under the earth, even if it is there, doesn't mean that you will have that reserve in terms of production and you will have it in the oil pump, in the pump station to, to fill your car. So There is a big question mark. The availability of reserves is something under the earth but the fact that whether or not the producing countries will be willing to bring that uh, oil uh, to the markets in a timely manner, or will they be able to do it even if they wish so uh, to produce that oil is a question mark. For me, the main question in the next years to come is uh, not only uh, the exact number of the reserves worldwide, but the investment and the oil policies in the key producing countries. Okay, we'll come to that. <laughs> but I mean, just quickly going back to the reserves, where actually are you getting your figures from? If you if you believe there are thir you know enough reserves, you know, for the foreseeable future or whatever, where are you getting your numbers from? I made the announcement at the oil and money conference to the, all the delegates that uh, we are at the IEA are going to look at the reserves issues in depth in 2008 in our flagship publication, World Energy Outlook. And up to now, we were getting all of our numbers from the USGS, United States Geological Survey. And we are in discussion with our uh, colleagues from US uh, Geological Survey how to improve that data. But we are also going to use uh, other data, uh, other uh, organizations, other institutions, and uh, looking at the uh, other uh, oil companies, oil field service companies, to make have a more uh, up-to-date uh, reserves uh, picture, and we will uh, announce the results uh, in November 2008. Okay, great. Um, okay, so, uh, yeah, okay, well, I'll, I'll go to, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you about that, because it, um, discovery has been dropping and dropping, you know, for, what, 40 years now, and in your resources to reserves, 2005 publication, you have this, you know, new developments top wedge that seems to be growing and growing. And I think that's taking the USGS projections and putting it into the, you know, is that really the reason why you think you need to go back and because you think this might not be? The reason is that the USGS uh, data that everybody is using, including us, is published in year 2000. And the last data point in that study, which is published in 2000, is 1996. So it is 10 years old, that study. It needs to be revised. It needs to be updated. And we see a lot of surprises in many fields, negative surprises in terms of the huge decline rates and uh, in terms of the discovery rates. 
So it is the reason why we are going to revisit this issue, the reserves. And in addition to USGS, we would like to use other data sources to have a more balanced, more up-to-date picture of the uh, global uh, reserves. As we believe, reserves is a key question when looking at the future. Okay, I mean, as far as discovery goes, um, I mean, Abdullah Jamar last year, or the beginning of last year, I think he was at the sem OPEC seminar, he, sa he said, you know, we need to find a trillion barrels of reserves in the next 25 years, you know. Um, do you think that's possible? I mean, we haven't found that type of oil for a long time. Do you, is discovery going to actually make much of a difference in the next few years? Of course, discovery is uh, a, a function of money you put in exploration uh, work and uh, you have to make the discovery in the right place. When you look at the uh, discovery rates and discovery activities, the discovery activities in Middle East is very, very low because most of the countries there uh, didn't want to uh, go for more exploration production, uh, uh, exploration uh, work because they are mainly concentrated in the producing from the existing fields. But now uh, we hope that those uh, uh, countries will try to look at the, uh, try to discover new fields, improve their activities. You can uh, find something uh, only if you look for. You cannot find this uh, if in the Middle East, if you, uh, if they were uh, to put money in the exploration activities, I am sure the discovery rates uh, there will increase. However, having said that, I do not think that we will go back to the uh, good old days in terms of the high discovery rates. I think the, the time of the uh, big fields, giant fields are passé, are over. So uh, we would have to look uh, for uh, more modest uh, size fields in the next years to come. Okay, so <clears throat> talking to Guy Caruso, he he seemed to think that we'd be we're going to probably can get up to 120 million barrels a day, and the reason he thought that is because of the use of new technology and the way that en enhanced oil recovery and um, you know all these other horizontal drilling and you know the amazing offshore uh, all, all these things that would be able to provide enough oil um, to you know. To, for the foreseeable future, frankly, till 19, uh, 2037. How, how do you feel about the, the use of new technology? I think the use of new technology uh, will help a lot in order to uh, improve the production in the existing fields and also in order to uh, identify uh, new fields. And on top of that, to get oil from other products such as the biofuels, such as the, uh, the tar sands. However, I think to, uh, to make real increases in the production up to 120 million barrels per day or beyond will be more and more difficult because we are dealing with more and more complex geologies now and uh, this would make the life more difficult even we have the technology. Yes, technology can help to increase the production levels from now to the 100, uh, beyond 100 million barrels per day, but uh, I am not uh, sure that we will come to 120, not because of the lack of reserves, but lack of uh, oil production policies and the, that the geology is becoming more and more uh, complex. Okay. Um, okay, I mean, if you look at what happened in the US and in the UK and most of the um, most of the OECD, in fact, the oil peaked and then started to decline. And despite you know 1970s, the high oil prices and all this incredible new technology coming on, it hasn't been able to change that. So, you know, you've been talking about plateauing or whatever. Well, firstly, there is an example of a plateau in the whole history of any province, but also. Um, you know, do you think that technology, why do you think technology might be able to? Technology cannot, uh, technology can help the, uh, the change the profile of the oil fields. Perhaps the, in the absence of a technology, the decline could be much more steeper. With the technology, we can smooth out the decline. It can be a lower uh, rate of uh, decline and the, the, the lifetime of the field uh, can be uh, extended. But whatever technology you use in a given field, there's a, a certain number of uh, oil 
deposit, you cannot increase that uh, oil when you have the best technology. It will only change the profile of the oil you will get from a given field, that's right. But uh, at the end of the day, the, uh, the level of oil in, in a field is there and you cannot uh, multiply that oil with technology, unfortunately.